From the mean streets of New York to the opulent hills of New Jersey, the story of Caesar Pina reads like a gripping crime novel. What drives a man to abandon his humble beginnings and embark on a perilous journey through the criminal underworld? How does a former street hustler navigate the treacherous waters of real estate and amass a fortune only to see it all come crumbling down? This story reveals Pina's humble beginnings as a street hustler in New York to his meteoric rise as a real estate mogul, partnering with celebrities like DJ Envy and what led to his great downfall. Welcome to Profit Predators Business Scams Unveiled, where the glossy facade of entrepreneurship meets its shadowy counterpart. In this series, we dive deep into the world of white collar crime, unraveling the stories of ambition turned deception. From the boardrooms to the courtroom, we expose the mechanisms and minds behind the most notorious business scams. These are tales of greed, betrayal, and the pursuit of wealth at any cost. Stay with us as we reveal the true cost of these crimes, not just in dollars, but in trust and human impact. Your journey into the darker side of business starts now. Cesar Humberto Pina was born at Roosevelt Hospital in Manhattan, New York on June 4, 1978. Back then, he and his family resided in Washington Heights. Right after kindergarten, his parents chose to send him to stay with his grandparents in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. He stayed with them for school, returning home to New York for the summer with his parents. This continued until he finished fifth grade when he permanently moved back with his parents on September 4, 1989. When Pina returned to New York, he was shocked by what he saw in Washington Heights. It was nothing like what he had experienced in the Dominican Republic. During the 1980s and 1990s, drugs were everywhere. Pina would see drug dealers driving fancy cars, wearing expensive jewelry, and flaunting the luxuries associated with their lifestyle. He started adapting quickly to his surroundings. Soon he began behaving badly and getting into trouble. He felt himself changing rapidly. Before anyone realized it, he and his brother began associating with the wrong people. They started making some money, staying out later into the night, and suddenly they found themselves living the street life as hustlers. His dad used to drink a lot back then. He would work hard during the week and then spend the weekends drunk. This suited them well because it meant they could stay out longer. His dad, fueled by alcohol, would sometimes get extra adventurous and start playing with his guns. He would even go outside and randomly shoot into the night sky. However, Sundays were different. They were family days. Everyone would gather and spend time together. His dad would buy roses for his mom, and they'd all walk to the Chinese restaurant nearby. Sundays were Pina's favorite because they were like the perfect family outings, dressed up and enjoying each other's company. They'd spend about two hours at the restaurant eating and discussing their week. A few weeks later, they moved out of New York and settled in Clifton, New Jersey. Patterson wasn't much different from other cities in New York. Despite their efforts to keep Pina and his brother out of trouble, they still gravitated towards street life. After settling in Clifton, Pina swiftly found new friends. They roamed the streets and indulged in typical teenage activities of the time. Not all their activities were positive, but it provided Pina with a feeling of fitting in. He was attracted to the darker side of the streets, not because he aimed to be a criminal, but because it seemed thrilling, adventurous, and full of life. He was constantly captivated and intrigued by what he witnessed every day. Less than a year after moving to New Jersey, he got into trouble for the first time as a teenager at the age of 13. He was charged with vandalism for spraying graffiti on walls with his friends. As a result, he spent nearly three weeks in a youth facility and was put on probation. His parents weren't overly upset. To them, it was just graffiti and not a major offense. Unlike most kids who would feel troubled after their first arrest, Pina felt a sense of belonging. After his time in the youth facility, he quickly returned to hanging out with his friends in the streets, picking up even worse habits. Soon after, Pina began selling clothes. He discovered a flea market named the Meadowlands Flea Market. He'd purchase items there at a lower price and then sell them for double or sometimes triple the amount. One of his main purchases was a pair of fake polo sweatshirts 
that he bought for $10 and sold for $30 on the street. He was constantly finding ways to make money through hustling. The more money he earned, the more he desired to earn, regardless of whether it was lawful or not. The hustle became almost like an addiction for him. By his sophomore year, his hustling shifted towards drugs. He started selling marijuana, commonly known as weed. Since everyone was into smoking it at the time, he made a significant profit from it and continued selling weed throughout high school. Things escalated by the time he reached his senior year. He was highly respected back then. He began socializing and partying more frequently. He was constantly surrounded by drugs and consistently making money. He started to care less about school and prioritized his appearance and earning money. Around the time he was supposed to graduate, his counselor called him into the office to inform him that he was apparently going to be one credit short of receiving his diploma. Despite not caring as much about school as he should have, he didn't want to risk repeating a year. Somehow, when he transferred to his new high school in Clifton, he lost credits due to excessive absences. The counselor at the time couldn't identify the source of the letter, so he instructed him to check with all his teachers to determine its origin. Since they couldn't ascertain which teacher wrote it, the counselor decided to tear up the letter and allow him to graduate. After graduating from high school, Pina didn't really have any plans. He ended up getting into trouble again. This time, he was caught with a few bags of weed. After a selling exchange, as he and his brother walked down the street, they started smoking. And while they were passing the blunt back and forth, they saw the cops approaching. It turned out that the two guys who bought the weed from him got caught and revealed where they got it. The police reacted excessively. As soon as they found weed on Pina, they handcuffed him and started threatening him, saying they would arrest his parents and have them deported. After being released, Pina went deeper into drug dealing and was caught again for marijuana possession, this time near his home, escalating the seriousness of the offense. Facing three separate charges, his parents hired a lawyer to defend him. In Clifton, Judge Hanging Harry was known for his harsh sentencing, regardless of the charges. Pina faced the judge who imposed an absurd bail of $70,000. Realizing he couldn't afford it, they transferred him to a holding cell where other inmates awaited their court appearances. After the hearing, he was taken to the Passaic County Jail and held in a cell until they determined which unit he would be assigned to serve his sentence. Pina made it to Superior Court where the judge reduced the bail to $25,000 and Pina was released. However, he received a nine-month jail sentence for marijuana possession. Despite narrowly avoiding a 15-year sentence, this didn't deter him. He continued his activities without realizing the gravity of avoiding serious prison time. Later on, Pina met his wife, Jen, shortly after being released from jail. They began dating and eventually became a couple. During this time, Pina was arrested again for armed robbery. The case proceeded to the grand jury, but the charges were ultimately dropped. However, shortly after, he encountered individuals engaged in credit card fraud. Being the hustler he always was, Pina didn't hesitate to get involved once again. This definitely got him in trouble. He and his brother were sentenced to three years in federal prison for credit card fraud, facilitated by their cousin, disclosing their involvement in cloning card numbers. While imprisoned, he learned about investing in real estate from another inmate who was convicted of mortgage fraud. Upon release, he used this knowledge and got involved in the housing market. Eventually, he transitioned into a real estate business, using his experiences to help other ex-convicts. By 2008, he had capitalized on the housing market collapse and started flipping houses for substantial profits. Over the following decade, he expanded his real estate portfolio to include hundreds of rental units in disadvantaged areas of New Jersey. In 2018, he met DJ Envy, co-host of the popular rap radio show The Breakfast Club, whose real name is Rashawn Casey. DJ Envy and Pina began organizing real estate seminars. These events aimed to educate aspiring investors on how to navigate low interest rates and rising home prices. 
Despite Pina's quieter demeanor compared to other guests, their seminars promise the keys to financial freedom for a ticket price of up to $250. Over time, the seminars expanded from local venues to larger spaces like the Javits Center, where experts covered topics ranging from mortgage applications to digital real estate. Allegedly, during these real estate seminars, select investors were offered exclusive follow-up sessions with Pina and DJ Envy for a fee of $2,500, presenting opportunities with lucrative returns, often exceeding 30% in just five months. Despite skepticism, many were persuaded by DJ Envy's endorsement and reputation, trusting his judgment over Pina's, so they decided to participate in the deals. Eventually, Pina appeared on the Breakfast Club radio show to share about his success and partnership with DJ Envy. In the fall of 2021, in their shared office in the wealthy hills of northern New Jersey, DJ Envy discussed his dedication to their real estate venture with Caesar Pina. This isn't just talk, it's our livelihood, he emphasized. Addressing their online audience, DJ Envy boasted about the potential $252,000 monthly profit from just two properties in the Garden State, emphasizing the goal of creating generational wealth. However, as the returns failed to materialize, Pina's below-market empire in Patterson crumbled. In 2023, numerous individuals stepped forward on social media, alleging that their life savings had vanished or that the seminars were merely a ploy to attract new investors, with Pina mixing their money with others. Around 20 lawsuits were filed against Pina in the Superior Court of New Jersey with investors claiming he didn't fulfill the promised returns on their joint venture agreements. 10 accusers also implicated DJ Envy in court, stating that his radio and social media promotions persuaded them to invest in Pina's alleged scheme. Some even suggested that Pina's business partner was aware of the situation. One building mentioned in the complaint located on Park Avenue in Patterson, New Jersey, comprised an unrenovated vacant rental unit above a shuttered laundromat. Prosecutors allege that Pina solicited funds from investors to purchase and renovate it, amassing over $3 million, with promises of a 30 to 35% return in just five months. However, according to prosecutors, he failed to disclose that he already owned the building when collecting funds from investors. Investors like Augie Rios, DJ Envy's associate, and Anthony Barone found themselves entangled in financial troubles after investing in Caesar Pina's ventures. Rios invested $100,000 in a joint venture with Pina, expecting a 30% return in five months. However, Pina failed to deliver, leaving Rios in the red. Pina attempted to reimburse Rios with a bounce check and later with jewelry from his brother's apparel brand. Lawsuits against Pina revealed a complex web of fraudulent schemes, drawing in millions of dollars from investors. Anthony Barone discovered discrepancies in a project he invested in alongside Anthony Martini, prompting legal action. Despite DJ Envy's efforts to distance himself from Pina's dealings, questions linger about his involvement. Pina's wife refuted some claims against them, while Pina denied DJ Envy's victimhood, asserting they were business partners. On October 18, 2023, Pina was arrested and charged with one count of wire fraud. The lead FBI agent in the case stated that Pina was accused of promising investors an extremely high rate of return and then using the millions he received to make himself richer. Pina pleaded not guilty, while DJ Envy, referred to as his business partner in the federal complaint, avoided charges in what prosecutors termed a Ponzi-like scheme. The complaint outlined Pina's fraudulent business practices, including attracting multiple investors without fulfilling agreements to build or renovate properties. Instead, the new investments allegedly went toward Pina's personal expenses and to earlier investors. The 45-year-old was released on a $1 million secured bond with electronic monitoring after his appearance in a Newark federal court. If proven guilty of wire fraud, he might be sentenced to a maximum of 20 years in prison and hefty fines. As we've seen, Pina's journey was far from a straight path. 
He navigated the criminal world, spent time behind bars, and eventually found success in the real estate business. But his alleged deception and fraudulent schemes led to his downfall, leaving a trail of devastated investors and shattered dreams. This story serves as a reminder that the pursuit of wealth and success must never come at the expense of integrity and the law. No matter how tempting the promise of riches may be, engaging in illegal activities is never justified and the consequences can be severe. Thank you for joining us on Profit Predators, Business Scams Unveiled. Today's journey through the intricate webs of deceit and ambition reminds us of the price of unbridled greed. As we conclude, remember, awareness and integrity are our best defenses in a world where profit can often precede principle. For more insights and stories that peel back the layers of the business world's darker side, subscribe and stay tuned. Together, we'll continue to share stories that shock and shape our marketplaces. Until next time, stay informed and always question the integrity behind the profits.